left are the rail beds and the memories. Fred Sharon reports. It's 7 o'clock in the morning near Ferguson's Pit on the Avalon Peninsula. The morning work train pulls away from the temporary camp on its way to another day of hauling up the rails it rides on. On board, the 20 or so rail crewmen relax for the one-hour ride that takes them literally to the end of the line. Some are young men who've only been with the railway 15 years or so. Others are veterans of the rail gangs with 40 years on the job. They used to make sure the rails were safe to travel over. Now they're tearing them up. The physical removal of hundreds of kilometers of steel is a relatively simple task. First you remove the spikes. Then you break the joints. Attach a huge steel cable that's hooked to a 140-ton diesel and it pulls 40 or more steel rails like they were matchsticks on further up the line where they're loaded on flat cars destined later for South America. Most of the men on this crew have worked on rail maintenance most of their careers, but others aren't used to walking the rails. Guys like Al Blackmore, who worked in the diesel shop in St. John's for most of his. He didn't think a career with the railway would end like this. No, never, never thought of it. I think it happens a lot. Start cleaning any shell all your lace and, and up the miners. <laughs> Others like Ed Holloway, who started on the tracks in 1950, find it hard to accept the end of the railway. You're out here taking up the tracks. Right. Well, how do you feel about it? Oh, uh, well, yeah, too good. Well, it won't hurt way for that too much, but to the younger people coming up, and hurt. They would have nothing to look forward to, eh? But Holloway says what he thinks doesn't seem important now. The tracks are coming up, a half a kilometer, three quarters of a kilometer a day. 